All right, on to more from the Bartitsa lab. And in this video, I want to talk to people that stab like a fanny. Now, one of the things that is very endemic across the combative industry right now is flurries of non-committal, very small stabs. And you'll see lots of people making the noises of a buggered feral badger going essentially giving someone a really shit Maori tattoo. Just small, non-committal little flurries. They might land a decent first shot and then everything else becomes a rather shit flurry of pokes. And I find this quite hard because anyone that's practiced with organic medium, so if you're practicing with essentially joints and cuts of meat, the ability for you to penetrate in these short shots is actually very hard. It's harder to stab something than you think it is. It requires more force to stab something than you think you'll need. So what I see a lot in combatives is these small non-committal stabs. And I understand it in some areas. I understand it against the arterial regions here. You know, create as many holes in that bag of wine as possible so they bleed out as fast as possible. But in reality, you know, it's quite hard to get people's throats and eyes. Humans are very good at defending their throats and eyes. And if your only go-to mechanism is these little woodpecker strikes, you're going to find penetrating a human with a blade very, very high. Especially if you live in the Western world, two thirds of human life is spent in relatively decent warm clothes. And if you think you can penetrate and stop with small shitty strikes against even a relatively mid strength jacket, you're gonna find yourself absolutely unstuck. So one of my main problems with these non-committal strikes is they don't necessarily match much Western endemics when it comes to clothing and jackets and the layers that prevent anything but a decent shot penetrating. But you're not gonna get far doing these little urban tattoos. You're going to have to throw some welly behind the strikes. And it's very, very common for people to make all the noise, but all their energy is coming out of their mouth. Fuck all is coming into the arm. You see people, these long little, little stabs moving around and they feel like they're absolutely fucking John Rambo. The problem is, none of these are really stopping the man. None of these are stopping the man. And people say, yes, real knife attacks are frenzied. And they are frenzied. But when people do it with actual emotional content, when people actually want you to die, they have to put some force behind it. I think there is a big trend in combative because it looks cool. It looks like you are strategically mapping tons of areas. They'll, move, they'll do all this shit. But under duress, under fear, under threat of counter assault, your ability to accurately find your way into very damaging places while moving at this speed is going to be hard. You're essentially playing a bit of a shotgun game to aim that you hit a lung, an artery, the heart. I think it's really important to get back to some of the more original principles. So if you look at things like William Fairburn, early combative people that genuinely had to use knives for genuinely important reasons, a lot of it is based on actually giving a fuck about where you stab, actually putting force and power and gravitas behind it. You know, I would rather one decent stab to the carotid artery or the windpipe or the heart than 30 small puncture wounds like a prison stabbing. You know, people talk about the prison stabbing approach, but most prison stabbings, an overwhelming proportion of prison stabbings, are non-fatal. They are non-fatal. They are shame attacks. They are pain attacks. They're designed to cause disfiguration. They're designed to make a point. They're not always, or very rarely, designed to kill. And even when people are trying to kill, it's harder than you think. It's harder than you think. So when people are practicing, and I see a lot of combative guys move around doing these little tattoo pokes, that's fine, but also don't neglect stabbing a bastard like you really want to kill him. Bringing things in with proper force into the opponent. Because often weapons are less than ideal. So one of the main things I talk to my guys about is, yes, whilst we have a knife and we're using a knife, then we can go at this all day. A knife that's designed to be a knife, allows me to do all sorts of shit and it's unlikely to fall apart. But if you think about it, 
most reasonable human beings don't go around armed with a knife and we always encourage people to practice these things with a pen, with a pencil, with a torch. Those things are not designed in the main to take such a beating. So when you take something that's not designed to take such a beating and you waste a lot of your shots on unnecessary flurries, suddenly that pen you bought, that pencil you're using, that torch you've got is broken and falling to shit. So again, when you're thinking about a weapon which can fall apart, which can fail on you, which is not designed to be a weapon, why build yourself the muscle memory of repeated tattoo attacks when in reality, if I've, I've only got two decent shots with this pencil, it needs to be shot, shot. It needs to be shot, shot. Because if I do four or five in a row, I'm gonna end up with just the rubber end and it's gonna be a pile of shit. So you know, if we're gonna say, most of the time when you use a weapon, it's probably gonna be a less than ideal weapon. And that's a good assumption to have. Even if you live in some mad American state where you can carry a fucking anti-tank weapon on your back and several Bowie knives on your belt, doesn't really matter. Most parts of the world, you're not really meant to or shouldn't be carrying a blade. So therefore, to build people's muscle memory into small non-committal shots is fine with a proper knife, but most of the time it will be something that's either an inferior knife, so a knife that isn't really meant for combat, or something which has the attributes of a knife, such as a pen, pencil, types of torch, and so on. So again, using volitional attacks. A volitional attack is doing the thing you intend to do. I find with these flurry style approaches for many people, they often forget mission one. Mission one might be putting him out, putting him down, killing him, stopping him from drawing a weapon. And mission one obviously requires full attention on that mission. It's hard to think about these things when you're just giving someone the urban tattoo. So I'd say when you look at your volitional weapon usage, if I wanna kill him, Fucking kill him, fucking kill him, put some force into it. Another thing which I find really important and I think is overlooked is when people sacrifice power for speed because they've got a penetrative weapon, which again, only really works with a knife built for purpose, but let's say you've got one, and boom, 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 you're doing all this speed. The problem is that this very rarely puts someone off balance and balance is something that's very, very important to fighting. If you're doing this, and bear in mind, lots of people don't know they've been stabbed until afterwards. If you're doing this, you're not moving the man. You're not disrupting his balance. You'll be poking him full of holes, and if you're lucky, you'll get him in one which is very damaging. But how often are people lucky? Very, very often. If I'm not moving him, he has the opportunity to defend, to draw something, to, do a bit, to essentially counter-attack, because we're not applying Kazushi, we're not off-balancing him mentally or physically. When you put a bit of sauce behind it, you move the fucker, you move him. And when he's moving, he has to reset his OODA loop. When you move him, he has to observe where the fuck you are now or where he is now. He has to orientate himself and decide what to do and how to counterattack. If I'm just peppering up front, even if I'm flanking, I'm not necessarily moving him. A lot of people do these kind of limp checks, but there's still not enough to move the man. So again, don't forget that sometimes use of power and use of force with a bladed article is actually very important. Whomp, whomp! Yep. Drive into the bastard, smash into him, move him, off balance him. That is real volitional weaponized attacks where I choose, I'm choosing to put him out of the game. And that means take his consciousness, take his life or take his balance. If I've drawn a knife, I need to do at least two of the three if I can. Boom. Remember to move the bastard, move him. And that's one of the things that I think, you know, when people look at J.R. House tactics, you know, they focus so much on the frenzy stab, they forget that the thing that causes the most damage is when they move the person, and that's when they get them into a position of, of most damage, of being able to cause the most carnage. But we'd say if we're thinking first with a weapon that is less than ideal, then using your own volition, your own choice, to attack with design, with intention, with force, whoop, is very, very important because not many weapons will, will cut the mustard when it comes to repeated frenzied attacks. No matter how cool they look, no matter how good your snarl game is, you know, it will still take him a long time to die in many instances, unless you've been very lucky in where you target. So I would encourage you, as well as those frenzies, because there is a really good place for them, 
get used to the notion of attacking with deliberate intensity and force into specific areas. Because that matters. That is very, very important. We want accuracy. Know where you're striking. And sometimes it's hard to know where you're striking if you're flurrying. If you're truly flurrying with emotional content, so it's okay to map a human body if you're not scared, or you're not angry, you're not upset. But if you are angry or upset, perhaps you want to sacrifice three of those stabs for one in a decent place, allowing you to comport yourself properly. The right accuracy, get the right weapon in the right place. If I've got a pen, a pencil, a torch, a small knife, a long knife, each of those things will dictate where the right accuracy is, where the right penetration can give me the right results. So therefore, just immediately bursting into these flurries doesn't recognize the variabilities of the weapon. So knowing your weapon, knowing your target and being volitional about it means you can use it in the right possible way. Penetration matters when you're using a small blade, a weapon that's not by design, that's not been made to be a blade, often they will struggle to pierce mid-level clothing or the mid-level clothing will turn what is a reasonable weapon into essentially a pain causing instrument, a trauma causing instrument, but not fight ending. So again, you need to think about when you're doing small non-committal stabs, is this really penetrating the clothing of the areas in which I live? Now, if you live in a place in the world where you're just wearing shorts and a vest and flip-flops, fine, stab away. But if you live in Western Europe or somewhere really fucking cold, a lot of the year, people will be wearing shit like this. And people even talk about things like uh, home invasions or home, insult, home assaults. Most people come from the outside in. So bear in mind that it's not just being out in the street. It's not just being out in a pub or a bar where people wear relatively thick clothing. If he's breaking into my house, He's come from the outside into my house and there's a good chance he's going to be wearing pretty decent clothes. Humans don't like being cold as a rule. So again, being able to penetrate properly so if you cause final lasting damage, you need to build that into your arsenal. These flurries often, especially with a less than ideal weapon, do not cut the mustard. So accuracy, know where you're striking, decide, take that moment to decide. Penetration, make sure you've got the right force, okay? And Kazushi, make sure that you're off balancing him. When you strike with force and intention, you tend to move the man much better than frenzied stabbing. Frenzied stabbing, you move him a little bit. Venetial attacks, you move him very quickly, very rapidly. You off balance him, you put him down, you drop him, you move him, you cause him to reset his OODA loop. Those are very, very important. So those are some of my thoughts about the massive endemic of people stabbing like a fanny. While it looks cool and it sounds cool to snarl and poke people and give them a pretty little tattoo, unless you're doing it in very specific areas, and that requires really, really good confidence, really good opportunity and often quite good weapons. Unless you've got those factors, it's often much more important to deliver powerful, accurate, final shots with that blade because the longer the confrontation goes on, the more danger both parties are in. So if I can end it in three seconds, or if I can blitz in 30 seconds, I know I'd rather take the two preceding seconds to do it properly. Those are just my thoughts, something to play with, a good philosophical thought experiment. I think there's a, there's a huge trend out there for this very fast knife work, but sometimes back to basic cut and thrust and stab, as you would see in historical European martial arts and combatives and World War II combatives, being able to do things with power, force and finality is often more effective in my opinion. Cheers.